Right, I'm here with Dr. Dobita Gray uh, from Sense Research Foundation um, during the Undoing Aging Conference year 2019. And we would very much like to hear uh, how Census has been progressing over the years and what's going on uh, right now. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, Sense Research Foundation has carried on plugging away and we uh, have benefited certainly quite a lot from the spike in cryptocurrency value that happened a year and a half ago almost now, uh, which led to a number of large donations. We got a total of six and a half million dollars given to us over a period of about three weeks. And we are being cautious in how rapidly we spend that because we are not sure it's going to happen again. But it, it still has meant that we have been able to start a couple of new projects and expand our education initiative and so on. So we're pretty happy about how that's going. But I guess the thing that I really should say in answer to your question is not so much how Sense Research Foundation is going, but how Sense is going generally in the wider world. The idea of comprehensive damage repair as a way to really bring aging under proper medical control and keep people youthful much later in life has now become completely mainstream. It's been kind of reinvented by various groups over the past few years um, so that now it's kind of become the orthodox way of thinking. And moreover, the progress that's been made in the laboratory by, of course, us in various um, of our projects and also by other people has got to the point where these projects have become investable. They've got to the point where people, perhaps not every investor, but at least the more visionary investors who are comfortable with high risk, high reward activities um, are getting in there. They're seeing how to join the dots as a value proposition. And the result is that we've so far over the past few years been able to spin out half a dozen of our projects into startup companies and aligned with us, in parallel with us, there's dozens and dozens more companies coming along literally once a week now. It's ridiculous how rapidly um, that are doing stuff that is very much rejuvenation, very much damage repair. Better than that, the reason it's happening is because the investment money is there. Investors are coming along and proving to be willing to write respectable size checks um, to actually keep this work going and investors are coming to us as well and me in particular of course as the kind of you know the spiritual leader of this field um, asking you know for investment advice and investment opportunities of course I don't tell them about the business side of things because I don't know anything about that but I can certainly help to guide people to the right kind of science that might be of interest to them and I've been doing that extensively over the past couple of years and it has had you know had great results so I am extremely happy about the overall state of the sense nation, so to speak. And certainly we're not done yet, you know, but I can actually see, I can foresee a point, maybe only three or four years from now, where Sense Research Foundation can more or less declare victory and just become an organization focused on outreach and education because all the actual research is being done very capably by other groups with private sector money. It's a, uh, point which I always hoped we would get to, but honestly it's happened a lot more suddenly than I ever anticipated. And in terms of the specific seven deadly things that Sense plans to tackle, uh, could you give us some examples of where we are specifically for each of them or some of them? I think the best news at the level of Sense Research Foundation is that the most challenging, the most difficult components of Sense are now beginning to yield then we're really now seeing very significant dramatic progress, albeit still early stage, but going much faster than it was even a couple of years ago. And um, the ones that are slightly less hard, like for example, the removal of molecular waste products inside cells, those things have gone far enough that they have become spin out companies. So we've got two companies created that way. Uh, we've got um, a company that's looking at um, the extracellular stiffening problem at, at restoring elasticity. Uh, we've got a company looking at um, death resistant cells, um, cells that are uh, getting into a senescent state. Uh, you know, so this is all going amazingly well. And that's in addition to the continuing progress that's happening on the easiest things that we never really used to work on ever because they were already being worked on quite capably by other people. So I'm thinking especially of cell loss with stem cell therapy. All, everything's going well, but the most difficult things in which I would include especially mitochondrial mutations, we're now 
undisputedly the world leaders in these areas. Um, they, you know, these are lines of research that everyone had totally given up on to the point of being really certain that they were completely impossible and they would never make progress. And we just had the persistence uh, to, to, you know, to get to do enough to, to get there. Um, you know, it really is a great example of how the short-termism that is imposed upon scientists by the system of science funding that exists worldwide has had enormously damaging effects in stopping people from working on the most valuable work and, and forcing them to work on low-hanging fruit that doesn't scale. Right. Um, uh, as a final question, how, how do you like the conference? How is it going? And so we've only, we've only done it in three sessions so far, but everything's gone perfectly. Uh, definitely nothing's gone wrong. We've had only two people that, for health reasons, couldn't turn up. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's part of the course for a conference like this. By the time you get this far in, you know, the conference is actually underway, it runs itself. You know, anything that actually does go wrong, we find a way to cope pretty easily. So I'm not too worried. And, of course, the main thing that I've got to say about this particular conference that blows my mind is the sheer number of people that are here. We have run conferences, starting with my own work, my own conferences back in 2003. We've run lots and lots of them over the years. And they never grow. You know, my first conference back into 03 had maybe 200, 250 people. And all the other ones that I ran in that series in Cambridge were about the same, you know, fluctuating by only you know, 20 or so. We were not seeing any increase in enthusiasm and so on resulting from the work that was being done. And that was the same with the conferences that we ran in California in the period like 2014 through 17. It was also true for conferences that other people have run, they've started, but they've not grown. And now, this, we may be just hitting that point where it's takeoff time. You know, because last year, the first time that the Berlin conference happened, first one in Europe for five years, since my last conference in 2013 in Cambridge. And it was big, it was 30, 300 people, that's on the high side. Um, and I thought, well, that's great, but it's probably just, you know, because there hasn't been one in Europe for five years. I was thinking this year they'll do really well to keep it at 300 people. And we sold out, which is 500 people. We literally were not allowed to bring any more people in because of the site of the venue and the fire regulations and so on. And of course the people here, the local organizers from Forever Health, they have played an enormous part in making that happen, no question. They have uh, worked really hard and they're fantastically capable people. But at the end of the day, I don't think that's enough. I think you're only gonna get this when the beginning is really happening, the beginning of the end, so to speak, or at least the end of the beginning, as Churchill put it, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. So I guess we can expect definitely another conference like this next we're, year. We're going to actually have a bigger venue next year because we right. expect that it's going to be bigger. And to be honest, you know, it's going to be maybe 20 or 30 percent bigger than this year, the venue, and that may very well not be enough. It's going to be pretty interesting. Well, let's hope that we can get to that kind of numbers. It's the problem we'd like to have, yeah. <laughs> yes, I understand perfectly well. Well, thank you very much for your time.